Tide Podcast. Here we go. Hello, hello, around the block and around the world. This is where we discuss, debate, and deliberate all things diabetes. My name is Doby Maxwell, representing type 2, proudly representing type 1, the vivacious, effervescent, always in the know, Miss Sammy Parker. We'll get to Sammy in seconds, but first, today's episode of Just My Type, brought to you by the Diabetes App a free social community app that brings together both type 1 and type 2 diabetics, plus their supporters. Find community, resources, and Sammy and me on the Diabetes app. Sammy, there is a game that people know called Where's Waldo? It's been played for years. It's very popular. Today, we are going to bring a diabetes twist to that game. I kind of like it. It's like, Where's Waldo the Diabetic? You know? I got to tell you, before we get started, someone scolded me for saying diabetic the other day. I got scolded too the other day. And the person didn't even have diabetes. It's a person with diabetes. No, it's a diabetic. Like if I'm the one who's diabetic, then I'm going to say I'm diabetic. That's what I thought. <laughs> like it's not your issue to tell me. <laughs> it's people living with diabetes. It's, I mean, sure it is. I like to identify myself as a diabetic. Right. So I just was wondering for listeners, don't, don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed to say that you are a diabetic. Hopefully you'll recover it, turn it around, whatever you have to do. But anyway. I think though, like with with this episode, I think the concept of where's Waldo the diabetic is basically discussing all the clues that give away somebody's diabetic or different factors that kind of allow them to know, oh my gosh, I think this person, sorry, I'll make that listeners happy. This person is living with diabetes. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, In your generation, who is the most famous detective of your generation. I have no idea. Can you think of anybody, are there detective, like a TV show? Did you read, uh, I'm going to date myself, I know, uh, Encyclopedia Brown books, as Zach and Elizabeth, our pod squad, are wincing. What are you talking about? There's a lot of TV shows. When I, when I grew up, there was a bunch of them. There's Kojak was a detective. Monk was a detective. But a guy named Columbo, that's a big one. A guy named Peter Falk. If we have older listeners, I know we do. Uh, you know what? Actually, I have one, and I don't know if Elizabeth and Zach remember this. Cody Banks. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> Cody Banks was like the movie and he was like an agent and I like find it classic. Yes, Elizabeth Hart remembers Okay, that. so my point of this whole, no matter what generation you are, where you live in the world, it is a, a detective get solves a crime by having clues. We in Where's Waldo the Diabetic, it's not a crime to be diabetic, but we want to solve who are diabetics or who's people with diabetes with clues. Well, yeah, I don't want to make it that hard for people. It's clues is all I'm saying. Yeah. It's a long way to go to say that, but that's the point. So I think that there's some major clues though. And for me, some clues that give away, you know, if somebody's diabetic, it's like there's test strips, right? Like you finger perfect test strips. And occasionally it's kind of fun to just leave them because it's kind of like a, Ooh, where's Sammy? Oh, Sammy was Are here. you mar- marking your territory like a cat? Yeah, I got to mark the territory like my dog. She marks the territory right now everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and the test strips. I'm like, okay, Sammy was here. I used to go to my, my best friend, Kendall. I was at her house and she was like, in high school, she'd be like, Samantha, I found a test strip. Or I'd get like a Snapchat of like an open needle, which ugh, that sounds terrible. I know those are supposed to go in like a special container, but mm-hmm. Sammy's not the best. It doesn't do that. Sammy's human. We forgive you. Sammy's human. We forgive me. <laughs> We put your heroin needles in one uh, place and your diabetic needles in another. And we'll keep the diabetic ones the other and nobody has to know. They're color okay. coordinated, so you know. That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> but um, the test strips gave it away. My glucose, I'd leave my little small travel glucose tablets places. And well, you can spot it if you have a device on you. Well, that's like a like a robot. Exactly. Are you are you artificial intelligence? Oh, no. She's just diabetic. Oh, no. I'm just intelligent with diabetes. The glucose monitor. No, but really. Like, you can see it. I'm sure. I don't know if you've ever seen people wearing them, but people have on different, like, continuous glucose monitors. Sure. Constantly. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Have you found, like, a, a test strip in a public place? Yes. Say, a, a restaurant, a mall. I don't care. where. I, I, found, I saw one at a ball game. Really? I'm thinking, okay, there's 25... Where was it? It was Wrigley Field in Chicago. Was it a test strip or was it a needle? It was a test strip on top of a urinal, if you must know. No, that's disgusting. So the, uh, well, I, I didn't say it wasn't disgusting, but you brought it up. So that's where we're going. You know, I wonder how that worked. Like if he's in a urinal, was he finger pricking while peeing? Like I just. I would think so. No offense. There's two hands and so many things there. I don't know what happened. That's where I found it. Right. I don't know why it was. Did there. he have three hands? Maybe he was from another planet, a diabetic from Uranus. I have no idea. But to make a long story <laughs> longer, like I usually do, I, it made me want to find. Find that person like a detective. That's why I brought that up. So I'm saying when you find 
anything diabetic, and you say, okay, who at this restaurant, mall, store, shop, whatever it is, uh, has diabetes so I can bond with them? That's my point. Yeah, because as humans, we tend to gravitate towards habit or familiarity. And Mm -hmm. the familiarity of somebody with diabetes or knowing there's someone in your vicinity that has it, you're like, where are they? Where are you? Stop hiding. Come out from wherever you are. <laughs> Isn't it kind of a relief though to say, hey, someone else I can relate to? And I find, and I don't know about you, the more diverse they happen to be, whatever that is, I welcome it. I don't care how old they are. I don't care anything about them. As long as, oh, you're a diabetic? Let's bond with that. I think it's a great door opener to make new friends of all ilks. I like that. Yeah, I do too. I think it's a, totally a door opener. And it's like, it makes you relate to them, which sounds funny, but I like it because it's like, I'll see somebody with, you know, I've been out so many places and I see them with diabetes devices or a pump or whatever. And I don't feel bad for going and being like, oh, you're diabetic because I am. So it's like, I'm not going to be like offended if somebody else were to come up to me and do that. But I kind of like it because it's, it's a way to connect and relate to people. And like, I was on my trip in Hawaii and I saw a girl with it and I didn't go up to her this time, actually, because I was like, she's on vacation. Like, I don't want to, you know, she was relaxing. But normally I'll like, if I see somebody with it, I'm like, do you have diabetes? And then they're like, what? I do too. I saw your device. It's like a dead giveaway. In a way, it's kind of like being recognized as a celebrity. Yeah. It's kind of like you're a dia celebrity. A dia badass. A dia buddy. A dia badass. No matter how you celebrity. put it. You know? And I think uh, now, again, I don't consider myself a celebrity, but what I do is- a- Celebedes. Celebedes. That's what Zach said. Thank you, Zach, our new pod squad member behind the scenes. we got a pit crew. We, yes. can, we can't do all this by ourselves. We have people behind us, polish and waxing, uh, uh, slipping us messages in case we run out of words. Of course, Sammy and I, are, yeah. we, we like to talk. We're not going to run out of words. But anyway, uh, as a comedian on stage, uh, I start talking about it more of late since I started doing this, this show with you. And people come up to me afterwards. Words. Oh, I am a diabetic too. And they'll give me this big, long story. And I've had about three or four that I just had to kind of smile and nod. And there's a certain time frame when someone comes up to you, that's okay. And then they go longer than that. I don't know if it's 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Okay. It's almost like you're talking to them. And unless there's like this mutual excitement where you're like, oh my gosh, I found my soulmate. Sometimes I'm like, Frick me, here we go. <laughs> it's the shiz, Sammy. I'm telling you. They they, oh my, oh they overstay God. their welcome. And I, you know, I don't ever want to be rude to anybody, but I'm an entertainer. So it really shines if, yeah. if I'm not. So I have to just sit there and smile and nod my head thinking, boy, I sure hope you stop talking really soon because my blood sugar is about to go to zero and I'm hoping for a coma rather than listening to your psychobabble. And I mean that in a friendly and a customer service kind of way. Yes. And what annoys me well, not annoys me because it's really nice. It's really sweet of them. But I'll be out somewhere and somebody comes up to me about like, oh, is that a Dexcom or is that a this? And they don't have diabetes, but they want to talk to me about <laughs> it for like 50 hours. Like, my best friend, which like if any of my friends went into that to somebody else, I'd be like so happy that I like, they care enough to do that to somebody who lives with it. But sometimes when it's happening to me, I'm like, they don't even have it right now. And I'm talking about it for 30 freaking minutes. But now, I like it or don't like it, when we're doing this podcast, we are representatives in a way. And again, I'm not trying to say True. we're not better than anybody. Sam and I don't. We're very down to earth. But I think we have an obligation when people come up to us and ask us, even if they don't have, at least to be friendly to them and to be accommodating. That's hard. You know, you want to be in the public eye. Well, a lot of things go with that. 1,000%. I am going to say something and it might come out. Actually, no, I'm excited to say it. So in a recent episode, we were discussing how this podcast is supposed to be a safe space, 1000% for everybody to feel open and talk about anything and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I had shouted out a friend, Steve. And Steve, I want to say that Steve is great because he honestly made a very good point that Dobie just brought up that, and I took it totally the wrong way. So I'm apologizing because I think it was really great the way he was saying it, but how we do have a big influence. And so I think with that being said and how he said it, we have a, the ability to make a very big impact um, in a positive way through the podcast that you're right. We do have the duty to talk to people about it and be that open space. And I think that with you know people coming up and talking, it's kind of like, Sometimes I do get annoyed, but I also know that like it's a purpose for it. And we were like meant to chat with them and talk about it because 
what could be better than talking about something that you live with all day long? We're human. We're fallible. We love everyone that listens to us. And uh, uh, none of us are perfect except me. Exactly. The Diabetes App is an online community platform that was created to help people living with diabetes find support and information in one spot. And on the Diabetes App, you can join groups and connect with other people all over the world who are also living with diabetes. I mean, for me, whenever I have a bad day, I find myself scrolling through the mental wellness group just to reassure myself that I'm not alone. The Diabetes App has a resource section where you can find articles, recipes, tips, and tricks for managing your diabetes. Download the Diabetes App today and connect with us right on the app. DieStrong is an online telehealth platform that connects you to medical and holistic professionals to help you manage your diabetes. Find registered dietitians, nutritionists, certified diabetes educators, and more without the hassle of having to go into a doctor's office. Wait, 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 wait. You mean a lazy bum like me can have appointments right from my computer? Sign me up. That's right, Dobie. And this week, our listeners can use promo code JMT25 for 25% off their first visit. Yeah, don't try to cheat and go to JMT26 because you're not going to get 26. It's 25. Go to www.diastronghealth.com. That's www.diastronghealth.com. Okay, it's funny that we, uh, we we just joke around a lot about a lot of stuff, but it's very seriously, we identify diabetics because we are a community and the community uh, stays together by talking and chatting. So what do you feel a good opener is when you see somebody diabetic without making them feel uncomfortable pointing them out. What do you do? How do you approach them? Dobie, I feel like you're Waldo kind of, you know, like people see you right now and they're like, damn, is that Dobie the diabetic? Like you got your Just My Type podcast hat on. You're on your 15,000 step walk that you've been killing it at. And you're like, yeah, guys, it's me, Dobie the diabetic, right? So people see you and they're like, oh my gosh. But now they're like, oh, how do I approach him? He's untouchable. He's the Dobie. And you're like, hmm. So if I were that person, and you were Doby, which you are, I would be like, hey, Doby, I know this is like maybe a little weird, but you have diabetes, right? I just, if I had it, I'd be like, I actually have it too. And I think it's awesome. So I want to like relate to you on it and talk to you about it because it's, I love when I get to meet someone else. But if I wasn't diabetic, I'd probably be like, hey, Doby, like I know you have diabetes, but I'm not, but I have like a loved one and family friend that has it. I was just curious if you have any pieces of advice or like tips. You would come up to me like that? Probably. <laughs> wow, that's right. <laughs> I would just give you that look, that look of disdain. Like, how You'd dare be you? Like, I'm trying to get to 16,000 steps today. I don't need you to cut Do you me short. see that I'm opening up my can of hot fudge to put on my <laughs> health food? No, seriously, what I do, I like to take it a step further. So like you have a loved one with diabetes. You know what? If you give me their name and email address, I will send them a personal hello or give me the address. I'll send them a comedy CD. Now, CDs aren't really in vogue anymore, but for a lot of years they were. So I don't know how I'm going to have to help. Hey, let me tell you, they're going to come back. Just like how film came back. Well, I hope so. But my point is, I, I try to take make a personal touch, and that's a, a PR thing that I'm going to say that our pod squad and you and I do too. So when someone comes up to us and say, hey, I'm diabetic too, work, no matter where it is, whether if it's an appearance that you and I are doing just on our own, I think giving them that 30 seconds, that minute, whatever it is, all joking aside, that lasts for a lifetime. You know, when they listen to us, I met them. They're so nice. I will listen mm -hmm. to what they say. I will support their show. I will recommend guests for them to interview. Yeah. I think that is so important. And that's one thing I think more than a TV or radio show, a podcast is much more accessible. And uh, that's why I, I, like, agree with you. I like this too. So don't, if you're listening to us, hopefully you're on your walk, putting your own 15,000 steps in. Uh, don't ever be afraid to contact any of us because it might take us a while to get back to you, but we will get back to you. Yeah. I also think this is a side note back to our clues, but you can also smell insulin. Have you ever realized that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're so right about that. It smells like a sterile hospital it, room. It, it, I think a Febreze needs to put out a little squirt spray to get rid of it. No, really, because like I was taking a shot one time and someone, one of my friends was like, are you taking insulin right now? I was like, how did you know? Mm -hmm. And she's like, I smell it. I was like, smell it? Because I was so used to yeah. it. And then I realized... Oh, it does have a specific smell. <laughs> it has an, an odor, what a, a fragrance. Yeah, it's like another clue. But I think it's funny because you have like the, the like, what's the word? Like, I guess, invisible clues, right? Which is like the smell or if somebody gets mad, you're like, you have diabetes. No, I'm kidding. Are you just like yeah, mad? How's your blood sugar? You got, you got low sugar? Are you mad diabetic? Are you hypo? 
are you hyper? Are you just a jerk? Yeah. Are you a type one jerk or a type two jerk? Yeah, type one or type two. And then you have like the visible <laughs> clues. And if you go back to our episode with diabetic Jess, you talked about how she has the anti-insulin insulin club. And I love it because it's so like out in the open. And the shirts say like anti-insulin insulin club, which basically means like anti-insulin. Like we don't want insulin. We're like, oh. Why are we diabetic? But it, we're an insulin club. So like anti-insulin insulin club. I love it. But I love it because if somebody was wearing her shirt or like wearing something that has her pattern on it or like design, I would be like, oh my gosh, like they're either diabetic or they have a loved one. And I, it was such like a, oh, I want to go talk to them about it. And I think like Dobie, we had, we had talked about how, what were we saying that there's like symbols for different groups of people? Oh, you had talked about like a symbol for like a group of people before. And then you were like, I wish they had that for diabetes. Yeah. When I moved to Chicago first to uh, get into comedy and it's 90 miles from my hometown of Milwaukee and Milwaukee is known all over the world, good, bad, or indifferent as being very segregated. I didn't come up with that, but uh, there, there are German people, there are Polish people, there are whatever people. And it just, they, they don't tend to mix. Mm -hmm. so the neighborhood I moved into Chicago, there were rainbows everywhere, flags and stickers and signs. I didn't know what that was. And I got to know, oh, it's a, it's a certain community that lives in this neighborhood. And I really enjoyed it. The restaurants were great. The people were really nice. I'm pretty accepting of pretty much anybody. And I thought that's, that's their thing. That's their symbol. I think diabetes people should have our own symbol, whatever that is. A logo. You know, I, I wear my just my type cap. You have one too. Totally. Yeah. That's why I think the merchandise is so cool. Cause I'm like, I, like I bought this shirt and it said, I'm sorry for what I said when I was low. Cause a lot of times when your blood sugar is low, you know, you get shaky or like sure. stressed out and I'll be like, guys, just shut up. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. And I love it though, because I had that. And then like, even my diabetes bag said, I'm a diabetes and people will, I'd be out somewhere and someone's like, do you have diabetes? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, that bag's so cool. Like my sister has it. I'm going to tell her about it. And it opened up a conversation and I love socializing. So I think it's... Well, it, what is fun? I mean, it was, if, if a disease can be fun, we're having fun with it. That's to say we have fun. We don't make fun, but we're all humans. That's the whole thing. It's the human experience about this. You hope that someone doesn't look at you. Oh, she's got a disease. Like you're a leper. Leprosy was a disease too. I don't think there's a leprosy podcast that I know of. If there is, you know... Uh, no. I think diabetes though is the most visual one as far as like devices. Like you can see somebody and you're like, they have, they have diabetes. And it's not even a question because you're like, they literally have on a glucose monitor. They are diabetic. Well, we talked about this in one of our episodes too. Uh, other episodes where somebody, I was in a restaurant and one of the staff was shooting a needle yeah. and somebody thought, oh, they're shooting drugs right in the restaurant. I, I couldn't believe uh, the ignorance. But again, we're here to educate that this lady. She was honest when she didn't know. Yeah. I was laughing about it. It's true because I'll be somewhere and I actually get a lot of like, my mom has diabetes or my dad. I, I get so many people that they're like, one of my parents has it almost more than like them saying a friend has it, which I think is crazy. And I'm like, whoa, why? How does every person that asks me that one of their parents has it? But um, it is funny. Like I, I posted a picture the other day and it was of me wearing my Dexcom in Hawaii. And I was like, what are the clues that give it away? And one of the clues that somebody said was aura of awesomeness. Mm. And I don't know why, but I really liked that. I was like, yes, that was totally not the clue I was going for. I was going for the next gotten clue. But I love that you said aura of awesomeness. You are woman, hear you roar, young lady. Well, according to uh, our Queen Bee producer, Elizabeth, who always does a great job, she came up with the statistics we, uh, we were talking about. There are allegedly 37 million American people with diabetes, 3 million in Canada. So in North America, yeah. that's 40 million people. That's more than the population of Canada. And we have listeners all over the world too, but we don't, we're not trying to slight you either. So there are millions of us. We're not going away anytime soon, even though I wish it would be cured, but not going to be for the immediate future. Sorry to say that. Dobie, can you say millions again? Millions. 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 And millions. You say it like somebody I know. Millions. Like who? Dr. Evil on the uh, Austin <laughs> Powers movies? Million. No, no, I'll see if you can get it. Millions and billions. Millions and billions. I, I have no idea who that is. Billions. No. Who? It was our ex-president. You know what? Here's, your, here's something, a little tip if you ever meet. I was heckled by Donald Trump. I'm the only person I know that was heckled. You know who Rosie O'Donnell is? Yeah, but define heckled. She hosted a talk show, and, and I was in West Palm Beach, Florida, working at a comedy club, and they were good friends, Donald Trump and Rosie O'Donnell. This was 1997, before you were even thought of. Okay. And uh, I was. it was a two-act show. I was the opening act, and they said, Donald Trump's going to be coming in with his wife. It was Marla Maples at the time, on Saturday night. And it's a big club, about 500 people, bigger than a regular comedy club. 
And they said, you're going to be on stage and we're going to darken the room and we'll bring them in in the back and you won't know they're there. So sure enough, I'm 10 minutes into my show. I see the doors open up. I see four people come in. Turns out it was two bodyguards, Donald Trump and Marla Maples. This is a totally true story. And uh, I'm okay, so I, they, they sat down and I'm going on with my act. And I hear from the back of the room, when are you going to get funny? It's Donald Trump. <laughs> I knew who it was and nobody else knew because you don't think about it then. I mean, he wasn't president, but he was still famous. Yeah. And uh, I said, look, I know who you are. OK, I'm on stage now. This is my show. Why don't you just sit there with a dumb look on your face like you do at work all day long and let the workers like me handle everything? So about a minute later, I'm getting laughs. I'm doing good. He goes, I'm still waiting. It's him. Now he's trying to be a he's trying to be a pain in the ass and trying to get attention. Yeah. So the, the sound and lights person turns up the sound and lights in the crew. So that's 500 people. They see him. Oh, my gosh. It's Donald Trump. It's Donald Trump. It's Donald Trump. So it goes all the way through the room. So now he picks up his bar napkin and he waves it like the white flag. OK, OK. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. You're not kidding. When am I going to get funny? When are you going to finish that haircut? That looks like it got hit with an egg beater and I'm slamming it left and right. And the crowd's going absolutely crazy. But I said, okay, now heckling me is like tipping over a wheelchair saying, I beat you up. Are you happy with yourself? Yeah. And it was all in good fun. And I said, can I bring Rosie O'Donnell up now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I brought Rosie O'Donnell up. The crowd's going crazy. So at the end of the night, the two bodyguards came back. Mr. Trump thought you were very funny. So well, he could have come back here and told me that himself, but I appreciate that a lot. As it turns out, wait, that's funny though. They didn't pay their bill. Donald Trump thought that the bodyguards paid it. The bodyguards thought he paid it. So it made the, the paper in Florida. Donald Trump goes to comedy club, doesn't pay his bill. So he sent one of them over with a hundred dollar bill. And I happened to talk to my hometown paper in Milwaukee. I knew a guy who was a reporter and it made their local comedian, Doby Maxwell gets heckled by Donald Trump. I still have it. It's in, so in funny. So it's just, just, did he say, I have billions and billions. Billions and billions. It's huge. Long story longer. That's what we do. That's what I meant. When you said millions, it sounded like Donald Trump. Billions. If you like Donald Trump or if you don't, I got heckled by him. So hopefully that's right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So uh, again, we're hitting the question in the pod. Again, once again, we're up against it. Yeah, we're hitting the question in the pod. Back to our Where's Waldo the Diabetic. Oh, yes. I guess you could say question of the pod would be what's a clue for people to find you? You know, like what's your Where's Waldo clue? Uh, for me, it's, it's face down having a seizure in a public place. Just twitching and ambulance comes. It sounds really special. Is that the guy from the podcast? What about you? Do you have one? Mine would probably be my next gone. Elizabeth uh, said hers would be hair scrunchies everywhere. I know our intern, Zach, he leaves them around too. We got to clean them up after him. Yeah, too. Zach loves leaving the hair scrunchies. <laughs> but so you guys can please, please, please rate, review, and subscribe Just My Type podcast. And give us a five-star rating because we'd love to get the diabetes community together. Spread the word, share the love, and talk more about diabetes. But you can find us on social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, at Just My Type Pod, underscore Facebook, at Just My Type Pod, and our hashtag, Just My Type Pod. And if you're listening, we love you. We appreciate you. Reach out and say hello. We will get back to you. And Sammy, let's put the cherry on the Sunday, kid. Say la vie, baby. This is the Just My Type Podcast. <laughs>